Hey, what's up guys? Tim here. So for today's tutorial, we're learning how to tie some knife lanyards, but more specifically how to use Schmuckatelli lanyard beads and how you can use them to tie knife lanyards. So I'm a huge fan of Schmuckatelli. They're an American company that um, is based out of the States and you know they make really great products. So here I've got an example of a knife lanyard I've used or made with one of their beads. This is the a classic skull and there's many ways to tie knife lanterns, of course, but I just want to show you guys how I do it, especially with these beads in particular. Yep, there's one. Got another example here. They've got a whole bunch of different types of beads over at Schmuckatelli, and um, so many to, to, to choose from. I especially like these ones, the uh, Tiki Tiki God beads. That one's the uh, Kiku, I believe. I think they have three different styles in that one. And of course, all their beads come in different finishes, too. And this is the uh, Ona bead. Right? So pretty cool. And uh, I'm going to show you guys how I use them to make knife lanyards. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. Alright, so I got my paracord ready here for my lanyard. Got two feet of paracord. And I got my knife that I'm going to put it on. Uh, of course, you can use any knife as long as it has a uh, lanyard hole. And uh, I'm using my David Mosier Mid Tech Crossfire really awesome knife. And then I've got my bead here ready to go. I'm using the classic skull. This one is um, the 18 karat gold plated one. You can see it there, really nice. So now before we begin, uh, the diameter hole on these beads is wide enough for two strands of 550 paracord. However, um, it's a pretty snug fit. So to make things easier on getting the uh, paracord through the lanyard bead, I'm actually going to uh, remove a couple of the inner strands of my paracord. So what you want to do is um, snip off the ends of your, of your paracord if they're, so you, you, know, you can get at the innards. Now I'm going to grab just a couple of the inner strands. There's one, two, like that. And I'm just going to pull this out. Right, so you're going to have to just work it out. Make sure you don't pull all of it out. You can, you know, tie this lanyard with completely gutted paracord, but I don't want to do that. All right, so now I've reduced the thickness of my paracord. Now it's going to be a lot easier to get through uh, the lanyard bead. Okay, now you're going to have to um, snip and singe and melt these ends because you can't really, um, you know, work them through when they're all frayed like this. So might as well use the knife I'm using here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you on one and then I'll do the other one later. But um, you got your frayed end here, right? So you're going to cut that off just to get everything a bit neater. Of course you can use scissors if you don't have a knife. All right, now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my lighter and I'm going to kind of just uh, singe the end a little bit. And then, working quickly, I'm just going to lick my fingers, and then I'm going to twist the end to a point. See that? Be very careful when you're doing that. Um, I have really thick skin on my fingers, just from, you know, manual labor. But, um, yeah, what this does is, now that it's come to a nice fine point, it's going to be a lot easier to work through the um, diameter of the lanyard bead hole. Okay? So I'm going to do that to the other side here, and then we're going to start tying our lanyard. Alright, so now that I've got both of my... <clears throat> Alright, so as you can see, I've got both ends of my paracord uh, and, you know, nice and melted and rolled into a tip. Now I can start putting my paracord on my knife. So I'm just going to feed it through one end of the lanyard hole. I'm going to double it up so it's nice and even. Some people uh, like to just use one of the lanyard hole so the paracord doesn't stretch over the back of the knife like this but uh, I like having it through both and now there's tons of ways to do this I mean you can tie any sort of design with the two strands from here um, but I just want to show you how I like to do it okay so um, it's just be a combination of a few snake knots and the diamond knot so uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna tie two uh, snake knots up here near the butt end of the knife, just because uh, that way I like to keep the two strands 
together like that, okay? So if you guys have watched my uh, How to Tie a Chris Reeve lanyard, you'll know this is the exact same way. It's just the same knot you use to start out the snake knot, okay? So we put one loop behind like this. And then we're going to take that strand behind through our hole on this side. And then we have our snake knot. And then I'm going to move it up closer to the butt end of the knife. All right? Just kind of like that. See? Like that. So now I'm actually going to tie two of these because I find if you just tie one, it tends to come loose. See, but now. The, the lanyard doesn't have a chance to kind of flip over onto this side, which I notice tends to happen if you don't do that because the strands will be separate. All right, so let's tie our second one really quickly. And of course, um, you don't have to use this much paracord, but it makes it easier. Um, but if you don't want wastage, you can always use less. Okay, so that's our second snake knot. See how it's different? I didn't. Uh, weave it through this the like it's not like I started the snake knot weave I just tied two separate snake knots and put them close together okay so we got our two knots there now we can feed our bead onto the paracord all right so this part can get a little tricky but if you've done everything right it should be okay so I've got my two you know ends of my paracord pinched together like this I'm just going to feed it through the hole here. And hopefully this works. Sometimes, yeah, it should be okay. So I'm just going to put the both ends in the hole like that and then twist and just kind of force it to get it through. Now I did notice, uh, I think the um, lanyard bead hole is wider, is a bit uh, larger on this classic skull. On these, um, you know, Tiki God skulls, the uh, diameter is a bit smaller, so you may have a bit more trouble getting that through. But as you can see, it didn't, wasn't too bad on this one. I noticed on, yeah, on the uh, Tiki skull, uh, Tiki beads, the paracord needs a bit more um, effort to get worked through. Okay, so I'm going to go about this long here. All right. And then I'm just going to tie two more snake knots. And then we're going to do our um, two-strand diamond knot, okay? It's always a little awkward doing this with a uh, kind of heavy knife on one end. Okay, so I'm going to tie my two snake knots. You guys saw how I did earlier. Alright, so that's one. And tie second one. All right, we got our two two snake knots on. Okay, and then now we're just going to tie our two strand diamond knot. Of course, I have a dedicated tutorial on this, so I can go through this rather quickly. Now you see, uh, it's already getting pretty short, so I might not be able to do that. My finger, the method, using the, uh, through your fingers there. But with our loop, we'll put it through here. And again, um, sorry if this isn't the most clear, but you, will, you guys can consult my uh, dedicated tutorial. The diamond knot, okay, we've got our Carex Bend. And then one through here, and then the other one through the middle. All right, see it is it does get a little tough working with such short strands. All right, so anyways, I've got my knot tied. Now I'm just going to adjust it and move it up here, and then we'll be done. All right, and there we have it, guys. We're done. Okay, so I snipped and singed off the excess paracord after the stopper knot and there's the lanyard there looks really great and of course as I showed you earlier you can kind of embellish the uh, upper part of your lanyard too this is uh, just like a titanium spacer that I got off of a uh, an another knife 
And of course, this also uses the uh, other Schmuckatelli beads. Okay. So, uh, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope I've explained everything clearly and concisely. If you have any problems, let me know down in the comments down below. I'd be more than happy to help you out. And uh, that's it, guys. Stay tuned for the next Paracord tutorial video. Thanks.